In Exodus chapter 4, the wife of Moses, Zipporah, does an emergency circumcision because God was seeking to kill Moses for one reason that is unnamed. And then she throws the bloody remains at Moses and says that you're a bridegroom of blood to me. There are so many moving parts to this narrative, but everybody wants to know what's actually happening here. Why is it happening? And is there an actual meaning to this? And boy, hold on to your seats because there is a lot happening in this short little passage. And I'm going to break it down and explain all of it. I promise you, you want to stay for the entire video. It's going to be a long one, but the payoff is going to be worth it. Now, the setting for the story is simple. Moses took his wife and his sons, plural, and put them on a donkey and went back to the land of Egypt. Now, they didn't make it to the land of Egypt before this narrative takes place. On the way, at a place where they spent the night, the Lord met him and tried to kill him, Moses, that is. But Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched his feet with it and said, Truly you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So he let him alone. And it was then that she said a bridegroom of blood because of their circumcision. So there's a couple things happening here. Um, why is there only one son being circumcised? What does it mean to be a bridegroom of blood? And um, is it relevant that God was seeking to kill Moses? All of these questions are about to be answered. Let's first address why only one child was circumcised. In Exodus 2, we learn about one of the births. It says, Moses agreed to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore him a son, and he named him Gershom. So only one child is actually named here. And then it says there's a long time um, before the king of Egypt dies. And if you go to Acts chapter 7, according to Stephen, this is 40 years so um, 40 years pass before the birth of the eldest son, Gershom, and when Moses actually goes back to Egypt. Um, so the second son that we've already read about must have been born in this time period, but his birth is never listed. He's not even um, uh, relevant to the narrative, but it's actually my contention that this is the son that is circumcised, and here's why. Gershom was actually a favored child. If you read the rest of the Bible, Gershom um, develops a lineage into priests. You can read about this in Judges, Chronicles, and elsewhere. Gershom is mentioned all over as an important ancestor of Moses. Eleazar, the other son, is not. And that is his name according to Exodus 18. Later in Exodus 18, we're actually given his name. Uh, this is when Moses already frees the Israelites. It says, Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for the people of Israel and how the Lord has brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law, Jethro, took her back along with her two sons. And the name of the one was Gershom, and here's the reasoning, and the name of the other was Eleazar, and here's the reasoning. And then they go and they meet Moses in the wilderness at Mount Sinai. But there's a second question that we need to add to the first question, which is, why did they get sent away? And why is Eleazar's birth never mentioned? And that is actually, I think, why we see the scene in Exodus 4 playing out with one of the children getting circumcised. So here's my theory. Uh, the first child, uh, Gershom, was probably circumcised on the eighth day, as all Hebrews were supposed to be circumcised. I suspect that Zipporah did not like this. She was not Hebrew and she was not Egyptian. Those are the only two people we know of so far in biblical times that practiced uh, circumcision. If there's another one, they're kind of irrelevant because they're not adjacent to the characters of the story. So Zipporah, I don't believe, uh, practiced circumcision. She probably hated watching Gershom get sacrificed. Um, I'm sorry, circumcised. And so um, she probably did not allow the second child, Eleazar, to get uh, circumcised, which is ironic since this is the child um, that doesn't really have a decent lineage. And we've, if we've learned anything from the Torah is that people uh, that have like bad lineages, there's always some sort of negative thing painted about them earlier in the story. And most scholars recognize that this was at once a longer story and that there are parts that are missing from this. And it's probably a very archaic story uh, Hebrew scholars have noted that there are words in here that um, are pre-Israelite uh, Hebrew words. Um, they are Semitic words that existed before the formation of Hebrew. This is probably one of the most archaic stories in the entire Pentateuch. 
And another fun artifact that would lead you to believe that this is a very old story is who is it that's seeking to kill Moses? It's not the angel of Yahweh, it's Yahweh. We know from textual evidence that the angel of Yahweh was typically added to Yahwistic mentions to make Yahweh less anthropomorphized. So they tried to remove Yahweh from interacting in the mortal world, the fleshly world, by basically adding the angel of Yahweh where it said Yahweh did something. But that didn't get added to this text. It still retains the archaic edition of Yahweh doing something. So anyways, what's going on here? Well, she's a Midian. She doesn't like circumcision. She probably didn't like what happened to Gershom. So she decided not to have Eleazar, the next son, circumcised. So this son is essentially cursed. And that's why God was seeking an occasion against uh, Moses for only having this one child uncircumcised, which is why in Exodus chapter 4, it only states that she circumcised the one. In fact, it, if you look at the Hebrew, it, it was just one foreskin and one child. And that was it. The other child was probably already circumcised. But why would she call Moses a bridegroom of blood? Obviously, because she didn't like to practice. The the filthy practice of taking a flint stone to your child's penis was, I'm sure, terrible and uncomfortable for somebody who wasn't an Egyptian or a Hebrew. So that explains the bridegroom of blood situation. But why was God seeking an occasion to unalive Moses? Well, obviously, because um, he had waited 40 years to circumcise this child. And I know what you're saying. You probably assumed it was a child, but that's not true. In Acts chapter 7, it says this. When the first martyr, Stephen, retells the story, he adds some detail for us. It says, uh, after 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. And this actually tracks because uh, we read earlier about the birth of Gershom. And then it says a great deal of time later, the Lord appeared to Moses. So we can assume between birth of Gershom and the bush is 40 years. That seems lined up with Exodus and with uh, the book of Acts. So what does that mean? Essentially, what we're learning here is that Moses had one child that potentially went 40 years without being circumcised against God's demands. God demanded that all of uh, his people after Abraham be circumcised. So Moses was um, rebelling against this rule, maybe to cave into the demands of his wife, which makes sense of another passage that we kind of touched on. Let's look at uh, Exodus 18 one more time. In Exodus uh, 18, we learn that Zipporah, Jethro, and the two sons go to visit, meaning um, even though we're told that all this uh, bridegroom of blood nonsense happened on the way to Egypt, it's clear that they didn't actually make it to Egypt. They left at some point because later, after the plagues, they get out to the desert and Moses is without his wife and children. And we just read earlier that the donkey... Uh, was saddled with the wife and the two sons. It says Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for his people of Israel and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. And after Moses had sent away his wife Zephora and his father-in-law took her back along with her two sons. So it is my contention that this narrative is uh, what explains Chapter 18, the reason why Moses' wife and the children went back to go stay with Jethro, whether it was temporary or divorce or just, you know, it, we, I don't want you to be here for this mess. This story from uh, Exodus 18 only makes sense in light of Exodus chapter 4 because uh, the wife of Moses was just ticked that this whole thing even happened. And Moses is like, you know what, maybe... I'll go on to Egypt. Y'all stay back. You don't need to do this. And then they were actually back in Midian the entire time Moses and Aaron were freeing the people uh, in the land of Egypt. And so I think all of these details make sense of the story from Exodus chapter 4 and the whole bridegroom of blood situation. And last thought on this video, some people have pointed out that it's possible that it was the son of Moses that Yahweh was trying to execute and not Moses himself. And this is possible if you believe that this was a standalone story at one point, 
And when it says the Lord was seeking to kill him, the him would be referring to the child. If the child existed in the previous part of the story, um, that was originally a standalone story that was kind of mutilated to fit into Exodus. But if you believe that this was all um, like in coherence with Exodus, the narrative that it was situated in, and that the he must refer to a character in the story that we're just reading, then it makes more sense that it was Moses that the angel or that the Lord was trying to execute. Because the, the previous person listed, that was a he, was a Moses in the very previous passage. It says that Moses took his wife and sons and put them on a donkey, and he went back to the land of Egypt. And then it says Moses carried his staff, so on and so forth. So the he is Moses, if you believe that this is a, like a connected literary unit. Um, but if you believe that this was a standalone story that was smushed into Exodus, yes, you could definitely read it. Uh, to mean that the he w that was being killed was the child that was being circumcised. We just don't know because that part of the story is missing.